a word of prayer, praise God. I'm going to ask the few that are here, stand with me. I need some allegiance and some support and some connection. Praise God. Unity. Praise the Lord. My gosh. And I, I have some tough things to say today. And by the grace of God, what I want to do is do them with honor to the Lord with grace to his people, with precious love for those who are suffering, especially the families of Breonna Taylor, Abed Arbery, and George Floyd. I feel for their families today. I heard for them. Those are my people. And I heard for those who have suffered during these protesting, that turned to rioting, that turned to looting. The country is very dark right now. There is a spirit of chaos, a spirit of darkness, a spirit of unrest trampling through the nation. And I want God to bring a little light to this church today, praise God. I'm aware that it is a celebration for the day of Pentecost when the church started. How appropriate because the church started with turmoil yeah the Holy Ghost fell but the challenges that faced the church after that were tremendous and here we are again the day of Pentecost and the church again is facing challenges that are very difficult extremely difficult and so I want to pray and ask God a blessing. I'm not going to spend a long time with prayer because I want to get to what I have to say. And I'm going to ask everyone that's here, be praying for me, praise God. I'd like you to lift your hands. Even though this congregation of virtual people cannot see the hands that are going up, I want to invoke everyone that loves God that's watching me. If you love the Lord, will you just lift your hands out of honor to Him? Will you just surrender? All the devastation, the despair. Let's throw it on his feet. Amen. My heart is sad today. It's the day of Pentecost celebration, but my heart is heavy. I'm very disturbed. I'm grieved. My heart is very saddened because of loss of life, murder, right in front of people's faces. But I have hope in God. I have hope for those I pastor. I have hope for my wife. I have hope for my children. I have hope. For my brothers, children, their wives, their daughters. I have hope for my sisters, children, their moms, their parents, their family, God. In Jesus' name, you are our hope. Praise God. I've never given up on you, Lord. And I never will. Hallelujah. All things work together for the good. For those that love God, I'm going to hold on to that word. I trust you that you're working out this situation. And that you will not leave us abandoned. I know you see this. And I know you're going to move. Hallelujah. I'm calling all the intercessors. Glory to God. The prophetic utterance. To be loosed at this time. In America. Shake the ground. Rattle the heavens. Hallelujah. Let's take the kingdom of God by force. In the name of Jesus. We ask for peace. I'm asking for peace, God. No more bloodshed, no more looting, no more, no more stealing. That's not who we are. Boy, if you agree with me, will you just type amen somebody? Will somebody in here just say amen? amen. Hallelujah, man. Praise God. I'm going to give the Lord a hand praise for that. I'm going to praise him. Yes, I am. Even if I'm by myself, I'm going to praise him. Yes, I am. I praise when I feel down. Oh, yes, I do. I've learned how to serve God. I praise him when I'm feeling down. Hallelujah. I got a lot to say today. Usually, I'm a very organized minister. When I come to preach before the in him family, there's not anything I say that I'm not aware I'm about to say. Praise God. Unless... I begin to move prophetically, which happens often. But I've asked God to let me move prophetically today. I don't have a planned 
thing I want to say to everybody today. But I'm so grieved. There's some things that are going to come out of my heart, and I just want everybody to understand. I want to give a caveat before I start dropping some things. Some of this stuff I, I wrote down, some of it I did not write down, and I just want to give a caveat before I say some things to let everybody know. I love the Lord. I love God. I love his people. I don't care what your culture is, your race. I could care less, man. You love Jesus. You can be darker than me, lighter than me. I could care less. Amen. We're brothers. We're sisters. Amen. And if you're a preacher, you're a minister, I'm not concerned about the nature of your ministry, the type of denomination you're from. If you love Christ, I'm with you. Amen. But there is a difference of some things I'm going to say about the secular mindset dealing with injustice and the save mindset dealing with injustice. And I want to be understood about that. That's why I'm giving a caveat first. And I want to say something to you. I'm not one of those ministers who's so spiritual he can't understand injustice. I'm from the street, raised in the hood. I understand the thug life. God saved me from it. I'm a person that has been in jail a lot. I'm embarrassed. I'm uncomfortable to talk about it. But I can't go into what I'm going to say unless the people understand. I've tasted. I've received. I've experienced the injustice of racism as a black person, regardless whether I'm saved or not. I've received the injustice unsaved, received it while being saved. I have an unusual experience with cops. I'm not proud of it, with police. I have an unusual experience with white police who clearly were treating me as a second class citizen, in some cases an animal. I know what it is to be strangled. I know what it is to be thrown to the ground and held. I know what it is to be in prison. God truly saved me. And you can relax because I'm truly sweetly saved, blood washed by the living God. And no man can take testimony for my salvation. I heard him speak to me himself and he told me to serve him. When I was 19 years old, I heard his voice power of God swept through my life. I dropped to my knees, not even knowing the word Lord, and out of my mouth came, yes, Lord, crying like a baby. From that moment on, I've been carrying the word of God. Amen. It was quick. My introduction to ministry was very fast. Two days. Then I'm down preaching to the winos and prostitutes. So nobody can talk to me about police, about secular life, about being unsaved, dealing with police, and the whole thing. I wanted to clarify that because there's this thing out here with us preachers that I don't like. Dealing with what is going on currently. And I find it disgraceful. For some reason, because we preachers put on a collar, we perform weddings, baby dedications, funerals, we go to graduations, home blessings, Marriages, counseling people when they're down, counseling people when they're having trouble in their marriages, counseling premarital uh, relationships, dealing with the hopeless, praying for folk, doing conferences, doing events, coming to preach every single Sunday, knowing people are coming to hear the word of God. It's very easy, very easy to get caught up in yourself. And I refuse to do that. I've learned from the Lord. I've had five wonderful, beautiful, humble pastors who taught me well. I want to say something to everybody right now. My pastor who ordained me is white. Loved him like a father. Love him now like a father. The One of the wisest men I have ever been blessed to sit with and follow. And he treated me like a son. 
His wife has gone on to be with the Lord, my mother in the Lord. I was with his family. His son was my best man in my wedding. So please, I'm going to say some things, so don't look at me like I am inconsiderate of other races or insensitive to white people, my white brothers, or insensitive to injustice. I know what it is to be treated. When I was unsaved, I was living ungodly, so I reaped how I lived. Carrying weapons, threatening people, being violent, it caused me great harm and embarrassment to my family. But I got it together through God's grace. He anointed me to prosper, and I did. And I prospered hard. And as a result of it, I always had problems because I lived in an old white neighborhood. All my homes, I was making a lot of money in all white neighborhoods, and I drove very nice cars. And as a result of it, every time I come home, I'm being pulled over. Every single time. And God gave me wisdom through my other expenses to learn how to talk to people, knowing you get an attitude here at 11 o'clock at night, no witnesses, there's going to be a problem. God bless me today. I live to tell about it and talk about it. So I want to say some things to shake the tree today. I'm praying that some bishops are listening to me. And you, you may have that attitude. Well, who is that guy? This is the problem with pastors. We act like, oh, your church, because I got more members in your church, I got more wisdom than you. I tell you nay. Amen. Just your numbers, let me tell you something. I'm talking to the preachers today. Let me tell you something. Just because you have numbers doesn't mean the Holy Ghost is in your church. That's true. Numbers don't mean anything. Everyone thinks because you're prosperous. Your ministry is anointed. Uh, I tell you nay. Doesn't mean anything. I tell you the true character of a minister of God. He runs to the problem. People get saved under his ministry. Constantly. Backsliders come back to Christ through his ministry. People leave their worldly ways as Christians and begin to take on the fruit of Christ. You see the change. Now granted, you have a large church, 20, 50,000 members. Okay, you can't see everything. But in times like this, we need to see you. I would love to hear from some pastors who pastor 20, 25,000 people. Deal with this problem. Why George Floyd is gone. Breonna Taylor. Why did that happen in the privacy of our home? The saving grace, only just a pinch, is that they released that man who shot at a cop coming into his house. He got released. No charge. But his girl is still gone. Ahmaud Arbery hunted down like an animal. How do you, I just want to say, then I'm going to move on. I'm not attacking you, my brother, my bishop, my apostle, my prophet. I'm not attacking you, pastor. But I'm saying it, I find it very unusual because many pastors have children, have families, loved ones. And if you're a black pastor, it's extremely intimate. Your relationship with your congregation. I'm not putting other white congregations down, but I'm just saying in the black church, Black church has always been a voice in community dealing with civil rights. I wish Martin was here right now, but he's not. And I got a question while I'm on it. Where's the NAACP? I did some research yesterday. Do you know that there are over 3 million pastors in America? I'm just going to let that marinate. 3 million. Okay, so 
When I was in my financial career, I was very successful, we learned the 80-20 rule of life. For every 100 people, there will always be 20 who take the task on seriously. But whatever is agreed to do, seriously, those 20 will be locked down, focused, committed, no matter what. If we only took the 20% of that 3 million, that's 600,000 pastors in America. I have been searching the internet, searching it, YouTube, everything. I have found three who have dared to call a prayer visual. I see you, brother, amen. I don't know your name in Atlanta. When you called the people together, told them to lock arms. Yeah, weren't concerned about social distancing or mask. Because mm -hmm. it's particularly somebody gonna get killed if martial law jumps off or the police come in with hard force. Prayer was wonderful. It was so beautiful to see. I love you and I salute you. I don't know your name. There was another pastor out there with a vocal horn saying, please stop the looting. Yeah, that's being a pastor. That right there, that's a man of God. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks the man of God is just, you just get the luxury of convenience of people coming to hear you talk on Sunday, but your hands are too clean to put it into the sea of difficulty, frustration, and turbulence, and chaos. We need you, man, at the front. A few weeks ago, I went online, social media, and I asked, pastors, call me, man. I don't have to be the leader. I'm not, I don't have to say anything. I don't even have to be involved. I can sit in the back of the room. I'm cool with that. But let's come together and talk. Let's talk about this epidemic, this scam. Don't get me started. This pandemic. So now I'm saying, pastors, man, how come we can't link up, man? Do a video conference. Let the whole nation see it. Doesn't have to be a lot of pastors, man. Somebody from Chicago, somebody from Atlanta, somebody from Minneapolis. God got pastors over there. And I want to say something to you, man. I did some research on this. I was going to preach on this, but I'm not. But I'm going to drop it. Remember when Elijah was nervous because Jezebel put a threat out to kill him. So he ran, hid in a cave, and had the audacity to talk to Elohim and say, I'm the only one left. Help me, God, paraphrasing. And God, man, as if the Lord almost laughed. Elijah, I got 5,000 more. Get up. Come over here so I can feed you. He sent the ravens feed him. He said, now get back over there and do what I want you to do. Here's my point. Those other 5,000 weren't assigned. They weren't assigned to where Elijah was, man. Check it, my brother, my pastor. Praise the Lord. Wherever your church is, that's where your Israel is, bro. Your Jerusalem is in your community. How do you do this? Or this. Or this. When it's happening in your community. I knew for a while. I said, it's, what, it's, as stuff is going on, eventually, it's coming up to Miami. That's why I was putting my word out back then, two weeks ago. I saw what was going on. Look, man, the Lord talks to me. Shows me things in advance. So here we are. Now what is going down? People burning police cars. I want to say one thing right now, man. I've lived through the Rodney King riots. Those weren't protests in California. <coughs> Racial riots. And I told my wife, I said, when I started seeing this stuff, I said, you know what? This is on Wednesday or Thursday. I told Marilyn, Pastor Marilyn, I said, you know, my, my concern is burning all these buildings. Eventually, you're going to see owners of Building standing on roofs with AK 47s, Colt 45s. I'm not calling for that. I have concern about it. I'm praying against it. And lo and behold, there was a picture on Facebook yesterday blowing up 
Because four guys brought their rifles and their guns saying, we're store owners. You're not breaking nothing. I'm not going to tell you the city it's in. But this can catch on. Pastor, we need you. We need to set prayer visuals. I'm down. I'm going to call for something before I finish, uh, uh, finish this message. And it is a message. We have over 20,000 pastors in Florida. Now I'm coming home. 20,000. When I saw that, I said, my God, Lord, you have called a lot of people to ministry. A lot of folk. Which if, of each of those pastors, if you even just add five people or 10 people to each pastor that's pastoring a church, 20 people, 30 people. Man, if all these pastors, we got on one court and started talking about peace, let's unify, let's have prayer, stop the violence, stop the mindset of retaliation, it's not going to get anywhere. I want to let everybody know, the Rodney King situation, yeah, the city of LA got burned down. And guess what? The cops walked. We saw it all on video. And they walked, free as a bird. Yeah, they sat through hours of court time. Several witnesses. The video got so dissected by these skilled science, scientists, attorneys. There were masses of people, I'll never forget it, outside the courtroom in Los Angeles. All the street was smothered with white and black people waiting for the verdict. And when it was given, more rioting started. But business went right back to normal, profiling black men when they're driving their cars. Certain people won't get loans at banks to, to live in certain sections, got excellent credit. Bank won't approve you because So what can be done? I got a few selections, uh, ideas myself. One, we definitely need to unify. The black leaders are concerned that are coming on. I know you're angry, I am too. I know you're sad, I am too. I know you're hurting, I am too. I hurt for these families like crazy I do. No one raising a child should die before, uh, should die after their child's death. No parent. That's not the way it works. But I understand you, but you telling people we're going to burn down things, telling people you taught us this, saying things like this incites more violence, even to the unsaved hearer, because us pastors are getting ahead of it. And I don't understand this. 20, over 20,000 pastors in the state of Florida. We can make some noise. My precious clergy. Somebody call me. I want to do something. I'm limited. I don't know Florida the way I know California. I'm, I'm still considering myself kind of a rookie in California. I mean in Florida. But I'm a Floridian to the bone. And I'm ready to go. Somebody call me, let's do, I don't care if it's two of us. I'll hold up signs, let's pray, let's bring people together, let's meet somewhere, let's have a peaceful rally. Where are the black leaders to unite us right now? I haven't seen any. Where are the civil leaders who fight these civil wars as a lifestyle? Where are you now? On the news, all I'm seeing is more news reporters interviewing more news reporters. And the script, you can tell, is, is definitely pre-writ. You can tell what's going on. I think we should pray. And one thing I, I want to definitely, I'm speaking to all the mayors and governors right now, we need to nip this mask stuff. 
This mask, I've never been a supporter of it because I knew, being from the hood, <laughs> the possibility of something going left and your identity cannot be seen, that is, to some people with an evil mind, sweet. And yet you saw it, it disturbed me yesterday to see on television black people throwing rocks at glass, robbing stores, going in, taking things. And yeah, white people were doing it too, so chill. It just broke my heart, all the people who took an opportunity to rob and loot, not even knowing. And, and if there was people in the Christian world doing that, your problem is coming. Because the Bible says, any man that brings any items that are stolen into his house, his house shall be cursed. We got enough problems with not working. Last thing you need is to not be able to take care of your home and the people that love you in there. I want to say something to the mayors. This is deep today. I'm supposed to be, I know we're talking about the day of Pentecost celebration. I am going to talk about it out of respect for my Lord out of respect for the Christian community, but I'm talking to the Christian community as well, right now. And I just wanna to say to the mayors, what I don't understand, and, and let me just talk from my heart right here. I get it when I hear a mayor come to, right now all the mayors, you know that was a travesty what happened to George Floyd. No human being should be treated like that. It's a tragedy, it's murder. I respect you for saying those things. But from you, I, me personally, I'm speaking for myself, only me, not speaking for my wife, I'm speaking for me. I don't want to hear that. You know what I want to hear from you? I want to hear from you that you're getting all the clergy together to meet with us. Let us affect the community. All I see the mayor doing is talking to other people who have mindsets to deal with social restriction. We are people, I'm talking about black people, that respond to God. Oh, yes, we do, man. You can get in your mind, but for the majority, if you're a black person, more than likely you grew up in church. Let the clergy begin to pull up to God, bring peace into this place. That's one thing that needs to happen that I don't hear anybody talking about. Why aren't the I'm not talking about the president. He's in Washington. Why aren't the mayors of all the cities calling to meet with the clergy? You meet with everybody else. Fire department, police chief, military, SWAT team. The real SWAT team is the clergy. Amen. It's the same old thing that's going on. High profile cases with intense media coverage, protesting erupts, and force is then applied. Same old, same old, every decade, every generation, and it has changed nothing. It's time to change our modus of operation, y'all. And the only way I can see it, for me personally, we got to hear from here. We need some dudes that know how to make it relative to life today. Don't preach to me about Daniel in the lion's den. There's a time, see, there's a time to be spiritual. There, and, I, and I'm not trying to suggest dealing with this injustice, you're not being spiritual. We are always to be spiritual. But I'm saying, I guess I want to say, there's a time, man, where you should not come off like you're playing church. Let's keep it figgy D. If you're not from Florida, you don't know. You have to ask somebody. Let's keep it 100. Let's stop this violence. Amen. We need systematic change. Systemic change is needed. The protocol of how to arrest a black person. I just saw a man on video yesterday. I'm just talking to everybody today. I'm pleading for prayer and peace. But I saw a black man in a line. I'm not going to say the city. He had his hands up with his eyes closed. And all he was doing was just holding his hands up, 
as the leader was giving the chant, I can't breathe, and a police officer walked up and sprayed him in his face. That will make any person, white, purple, blue, green, have a mindset of anger and want to retaliate. Thank God the man just backed up, had to grab his eyes. People came and got him and took him away so that he wouldn't get an opportunity to possibly react or retaliate. I want to let everybody know inciting violence, retaliation, that's not the way. Should we speak? Yes. Should we speak out? Yes. Should we take action? Definitely. We, meaning black people and white people, everyone against racism, we should take action. That's the we I'm talking about. But inciting, trying to agitate, instigate retaliation through violence, I want everybody to understand. When I'm concerned about these protesters, I'm a pastor, man, and I've got to think this way. I have some of the most beautiful people I pastor. Some of them just got married. Some of them are beginning new careers. Some of them are beginning new jobs. Some of them have just graduated from high school or elementary school, college. And their future is bright. I'm one of those people God uses to protect those futures. That's my job. Contrary to what people think, just to preach to me. No. Pastor Merrill and I have a fiduciary responsibility through Christ to protect those futures. And what hurts me is when I see them being caught up, and it's difficult. I know it. As a young person, black, see a man with a white cop's neck, knee on his neck, and the man clearly is struggling to breathe. And then keep your knee there three minutes after he's dead. I know your people are really hot. No, no, no. No. I get it. I feel your pain. But you cannot retaliate by looting, stealing, or causing more unrest. My concern is today, and I know for a fact, because in this church we have people like this that are concealed legally. There are people in the nation that carry guns. I promise you there were people at that protest strapped. My concern is something, all it takes is a little match. And we're at a full outright civil war in America which there are elitists like George Soros, Satan's son, who has a website Hiring protesters, paying them $99 per protest. This is why you see, and I'm not saying they are the only ones. I know the KKK is out there, white supremacist extremists out there, black supremacist extremists out there. It's crazy what's going on. Mafiosos, all kind of stuff is going on while the innocent people are trying to let their voice be heard. I get it, man. I see you, brother. But unfortunately, we live in a world where the devil does not play fair. I'm concerned about our young people being out, especially right now after curfew, man. Honor the curfew, come on. Just go home. The convenience of wearing masks to disguise identity while robbing and initiating destruction has been brought on by those telling us that they need to have this Stupid mask on while we're walking around in the in the city. I'm not being insensitive to the COVID-19 people who have died. Please understand me. But I gotta rethink some things because I saw people on social media on the news. There were some other cities that blocked highways, not just Miami, blocked highways. People sitting in their car, and people were walking up to their car, literally smashing their windows while the driver's sitting in there. I gotta tell you. In Florida, you do that? That's a bad decision in Florida. People are, shall we say, lead worthy. You can get lead poisoning. This is, this 
is a, but because you have on a mask, can't see you. Don't know who you are. I saw a white guy jump out of his car. He had, his hands were free, but he jumped out the car and said, please don't, don't hurt my vehicle. I'm leaving. And he backed up against traffic. <laughs> I don't know how he got off the freeway. This type of activity is a disgrace to Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and as a matter of fact, Martin Luther King. The way we've gone about things. We need to change, my brothers. I'm praying for the bishops, and I get it. And let me say something of these, all the pastors, everyone's not an orator. I get it, man. I know that everyone's not an administrator. There's different kind of pastors. Some are administrative pastors. Some are ministry pastors. They're charismatic. That's their calling, their ability. They're not strengthened or skilled with the gift of administration and government and churches. So I get it that all pastors don't know how to orchestrate, but I guarantee you, you got people in your church that do know how to do it. Let's come together. Bishop, call me, man. Apostle, call me. And I'm talking to female apostles, male apostles, female ministers, pastors as well. Call me. My wife and I will come. Let's talk or let's get on a video conference and discuss peace. I'm not, I'm not interested in talking about retaliation. That's not, I'm not going to be a part of that. I don't want that kind of blood on my hands. Somebody gets killed, then I've got to stand before the Lord alone. I'm not, I'm not participating in that. I want to talk about peace. I want to talk about methods to put a strang stranglehold to change this systemic injustice that is taking place. All of these people that were at these protesters, many license plates from out of state, there's some coordination going on here that is diabolical at these protests. Something's going on, a hidden agenda, an undercurrent that's undermining the idea that we simply want to be heard. And I'm gonna say this right now, that officer is not enough. We want the other three. Yeah, we want it. We want it. We want the other three. And when I say we, let me be clear about my we. All those against racism. I don't care what color you are. You know you against racism. I just want to thank God for all the white people I saw over the course of these days that were walking with everyone to support this statement we're making that this injustice has to stop. Stop the murdering. Stop killing black people behind your badge. It's got to stop. I, I want to say one thing. Today is the day of Pentecost, and I'm, I'm going to move on to this. I want to speak about it in my own way if I can. We need fresh fire, man. It's the day of Pentecost, so I'm going to say that. We need fire, but we need it fresh. Talking to me about David and Goliath right now, I'm not trying to hear you, bro. No disrespect, no condemnation, no condescending spirit at all. But I repeat, man, I, I, would, I just wish some pastors would just take a look at the congregation. Everybody's not 60 in your, in your church. You have young people who are in elementary school, junior high school, high school, college. The pressure's really on Pastor Mel and I at NM Nation because we pastor people with master's degrees. People that are pursuing their PhDs. It's no joke here. A lot of college students here. A lot of young people here. Young adults here. Intelligent. All of them. The teens. Intelligent. Ask me hard questions. I gotta be on my game but I refuse to ignore what they're facing in life. I refuse to be disconnected from reality. These young people I, I pastor, they're black. What am I supposed to say to them that want to be astronauts, attorneys, 
or maybe like myself, be a financial investment banker that want to be principals of schools or even president of the United States. Mathematic majors want to be professors at college. What do I say to these people? What do I say to the couples that just got married want to bring children into this dark world? I was asked by a brother, he called me, he said, Pastor, and I was, what's funny about it, I was just talking to my wife about it, and I made a comment to her about young people having children today, that my heart hurts for the type of world that they would bring children in. I'm not, I'm not telling people to not have babies, but it just hurts. I wish the world was far more safer and peaceful. But I had a young man call me right after that conversation I had with my wife. That day, later on, said to me, Pastor, I'm getting married, but I'm looking at this COVID-19, I'm looking at vaccinations, I'm looking at unrest in the, in, the, in the community. My child, woman or man, is going to be black. What do you think, Pastor? Should I just get married and not be thinking about children? I had to quickly tell him, man, your legacy is everything, brother. Leave the legacy, man. But the body of Christ, as we get closer to the return of the Lord, things are going to get ugly. You're going to need your faith. But I trust God. Period. Let me tell everybody something while I'm talking about fresh fire. Jesus gave a warning. And what he said was, you shall know the end of the world is near when you see commotion. This is in the King James Version Bible, the word commotion. I want to give a definition of this. This wasn't something I was planning on talking about, but I'm being led by the Spirit of God. I'm going to ask you to turn. If you have a Bible, you can see it. I believe I'm going to say Luke. And I'm not going to even read the scripture because I want to get moving. Yeah, 21 chapter, Luke 21, 21st chapter. Check out verse 9 when you get a chance. He made it clear, commotions are going to be part of one of the signs before he comes. I just have a question to all my blood wash Christians, all the lovers of God. Are we in commotions? You'd have to be blind to say no to that, that question. We must open ourselves to receiving fresh fire from the Holy Ghost, man. We need to open ourselves to it. And I'm, I'm pleading that the bishops and all the pastors, man, engage us. Praise God. And I say us, meaning I'm a follower too. I, I have covering. My bishop, who I just told you about, I pray he's watching today. I love you, bishop. Thank you for all of your precious wisdom to my life and Pastor Marilyn's life, we are eternally grateful for you and Trish. Amen. Our first lady who's going on to be with the Lord, I give honor to you, sir. Praise the Lord. But we need fire from above. We need fresh fire. A wise believer doesn't rely on experience of yesterday's victory to fight today's battle. Today's battle, we are in the heat of racism. It has taken over everything, even this pandemic. There was no social distancing being practiced all week. And if you really want to know what really, what some of these scientists should have thought about, something like this, people needed excuses to get out their house. Oh, they were happy to get out. And some of y'all not fooling me, some of y'all were fellowshipping. Hey man, let's meet at the, let's meet at the protest. Haven't seen you in a while. God told me, man, I, boy, I've heard from the Lord. I can say some things. For your Christian life and ministry, you need to receive fresh fire. Acts 2 and 3, amen, if somebody would type it in. And the Bible says, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire. I got to wrap this up. And it sat upon each of them. The church was born by fire. 
and needs to continue to conduct itself by fire from the Lord. I just want to say to all the ministers, man, that are coming up, waiting to be ordained. You know you have a calling on your life to be an elder, a bishop, apostle, a pastor. You may even already be a prophet. Prophets are born. They're not selected. They're not handpicked. They're born. God chooses prophets in the belly. Same with apostles, believe it or not. But the fire of God in the life of a minister is a sign of divine approval that indeed he or she has been called, anointed, and appointed by the Almighty God for the work in ministry. This is why I know for a fact some pastors are quiet. Because the anointing truly has never. I'll leave it. For as a believer and followers of Christ, when we have the fire of God, we will not be able to keep quiet. We will not be able to sit still and be non-involved. Look at this scripture, Jeremiah 20 and 9. Then I said, I will make, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more of his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing and could not stay. God's word was like fire in his bones. It was such a powerful and compelling force that he could not hold it in. And if you can receive it, the fire of the Lord is burning now. Do you really think he wants Christians looting out there? And I'm not accusing Christians. But I know everyone in, in, in spiritual that was out there that are Christians. And that's where you and I come in, Pastor. To alert people about the way to do things with the banner of the blood of Christ still waving. Amen. It is not something you can hide. It's not something that you can put away from yourself. It's a compelling force from God. Zeal for the kingdom of God will consume a person when the fire of God hits you. Amen. And I'm telling you, I got that fire right now. I love people. I don't care about your race, man. But I am concerned as a black person that we be treated fair. And nobody asks for something special. Just level the playing field. Let me do my thing. I either succeed or fall on my face, but just make it fair. I have one man and in the financial business always had to endure talking to people on the phone and hear them call my people names that were very treacherous as a black person. And it was illegal to respond to because if you did, you lose your job talking to a customer. These were people that had $10 million in their checking accounts, $20 million in their savings accounts. They felt entitled to just slander the race of the black American. We need a change, and we need pastors to speak up. Let's take the lead, man. Let's step in the front. Praise God. Just like the fire fell on those in the upper room, that fire can fall on us, and we can begin to prophesy. Amen. The Lord is still willing to put the prophet in front. He always talks. You know this. He talks to his prophets first. Nobody hears anything until that prophet says. Amen. I just want to remind everybody, Miriam thought she knew better than Moses. Trying to tell Moses what to do. God struck that woman with leprosy right in front of Moses. Moses had to go to the tabernacle and pray and ask God for mercy for her. Father, in no certain terms, I'm paraphrasing, made it clear. I will talk to her. I'll talk to you. That's not a male woman thing at all. Moses was the leader. Amen. He lifted the leprosy. Miriam got the, got the message. You're not the one leading. There's a lot of people in our churches who have the ability to lead. They don't have the appointed mandate. We have the appointed mandate. Not just the calling. The appointed mandate. Let's get to work, pastors. Praise God. I want to pray, man.
Amen. I'm going to ask people in here to stand with me. I want to come against this stuff in the land. And I want to pray for some of the pastors who are willing to stand up for God. Glory to the Lord. That are willing to be faithful in Christ. I want to tell you to remember Ephesians 5.18, Bishop. I want to encourage you, brother. I want to encourage you, sister. Apostle, remember Ephesians 5.18. We must be filled with the Spirit, especially with these darkened days, race riots, pandemics. I want to leave the final scripture with, uh, with us all. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthen me. Yeah. He'll strengthen us. Uh-huh. Yeah, daughter. He's going to strengthen us. Uh-huh. Yeah, my brother. God is going to strengthen us, man. And I pray your strength today. And I call out every blood-washed believer, glory to God. This is what we need to do. I want to give this scripture because I forgot to do it. Then I'm going to pray. But Chronicles, Second Chronicles, seven fourteen. One of the most famous scriptures in the world in the body of Christ. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and forgive their land. Oh, our land needs healing. We need healing from the Lord. We need blessing on our land. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, cleanse all the soil parts of our communities in the name of Jesus. Cleanse our hearts, God, of all those who have the ability to lead in our communities against racism. Refresh every dry area in the body of Christ's life right now, God, and heal every wounded part of our lives. We're hurting, Lord. The people of God, we're hurting. The people of the world are hurting. We're hurting. Heal us. Bend every evil thought, every evil rigidity, every evil thought of destruction, every evil thought of retaliation, and I come against the spirit of murder. I bind it in Jesus' name. For those that are on social media, just agree with me. Praise God. And those that are here, just come and agree with me. I speak life to every family here. Life to every family on social media. I speak life and I proclaim peace. I pull it from heaven. Glory to God. And I loose it upon the earth. Upon the United States of America. Upon the White House. Upon all the mayor's houses. Where they make decisions for our communities. Oh Holy Spirit. Oh precious Lord. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost warm every satanic mind in Jesus name give life where death has trampled over the door kindle us with fire Lord of charity true charity the love of the Lord the burden for life the hunger for righteousness in Jesus name oh Lord glue us together as black people glue us to unite to form a one mindset and be united as one, not separated, and move with tools of peace, tools of love, tools of safety toward an expected end. Enrich us with your gifts, God. All the ministers that we come forward and step to the front of the masses. Quicken us and increase our wisdom 
Increase our understanding. Increase our desire for the things of heaven and for the life of the brethren, even the life of our neighbors. In Jesus' name. And quench every rebellion in my life and in each other's lives and all the people of God's life. In Jesus' name. Break the backbone of rebellion. In Jesus' name. Now I bind the spirit of murder in America behind the blue. Deal with these police officers, God, who take liberties and abuse their authority. Let them be checked by other cops, other police officers, and tell them to stop it. I pray for mercy to fall upon us, God. Protect our teenagers, Lord. The tomorrow. Look over the young people. The tomorrow of life. They represent tomorrow. And I refuse as a pastor to help me to sit back and be silent. I pray my words have had effect today, God. I've done my best. Prick bishops. Apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers, elders, deacons, ministers of all kinds, female and male. Print hearts, God. Turn up the fire of heat. Let us come together and let's pursue peace. And a wonderful man to give us a strategy, God, that will choke this racism and stop it in the name of Jesus. I decree prophetically there will be a tomorrow for our black kids. I decree there will be a tomorrow for our black young adults. The future husbands, future wives, future mommies, future daddies, future lawyers, future teachers, even athletes, future athletes, whatever God, I pray that there's a tomorrow. Look over us. I pray right now, everyone that needs healing, everyone that's grieved, everyone that's depressed, everyone that has despair, even if you're angry, will you just lift your hands? Talking to your social media, put the phone down, man. Put me on speaker and lift your hands. Just do it. You need to, you need to surrender right now. I feel very led to tell all those that are listening to this, even if you rewind it, lift your hands to God right now. Surrender. Let go. Let go of your anger. Let go of your hostility. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Trust him. He knows what he needs to do. He's going to guide us. He's going to lead you. He's going to lead me. He's going to lead my wife. He's going to let us home. He's going to let us know. Come on, come on, come on. Lift, 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 lift. Release, release your anger. Release your grief. The Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord. And he will exalt you in due time. Meaning he's going to bring your spirit up. When you least expect, everything's going to feel better. I guarantee you, you're going to feel better if you join me in this little moment of surrender. Come on, come on, come on. Stretch. Just open your mouth. Think about God. See the mercy seat. One day you're going to stand before it. The peace of God. The serenity of the Lord. The precious love of Christ. Oh, we need to remember these things. He loves us. If you have any sins, while your hands are up, my God, just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Oh, man. I wish I could be with you right now. I feel the anointing so beautiful. I got to stop. I'm going to call Pastor Marilyn up. Praise God. And let her tell us what to do. Amen. Praise God for a beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. We pray that you were blessed. If you've heard anything that applies to your life, anything that has calmed you or given you peace or caused you to come out of this fear, or whatever it is, even if you have repented, because during this broadcast, Holy Spirit has spoken to you about some sin in your life. I just want you to know that you are forgiven. If you need to be saved, and all you have to do is call upon the Lord. But right now, I want you to just put your hand over your heart and just say, real simply, Lord, everything that you have prepared for me today, I receive. 
And wherever I am not willing to follow you, wherever I'm not willing to receive your wisdom, Lord, then you can override that. What I want, Father God, today in my life, you say that about your life, is for your will to be done on earth and in these earthen vessels as it is in heaven. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we pray that you would join us again on Tuesday for our Spicy Tuesday Bible study. And also, if you desire to give to this ministry, you can simply do so by using the cash app, dollar sign, In Him Nation. That's our church acronym, New Hope International Ministries, In Him Nation. And also, you can go online at www.inhimnation.org. God bless you, and we'll see you again real soon. Remember, continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for you. God bless you. Amen.